get up high enough, the goal is to strike out to the next cloud and to cross this channel. So, uh, it's a pretty tricky... Oh, <laughs> I hate it when that happens. So, I flew too high up into the base of the cloud. That gun fire. The motor itself was working, but we got a little problem with the uh, 3D plastic catching on fire. So this is going to be an update video going over some of my current activities and projects. And I've been doing some fun work with the atmospheric electricity motors again. If you followed my channel, you know that I've been developing these little Atma motors. And I've made a mini Atma motor and a larger Atma motor. Well, I'm beginning to work on a very large Atma motor. I'm trying to see if this scales up, if the torque increases as we increase the size. And uh, they're really fun motors to experiment with. They're not all that well known. If you don't know much about them, go back and watch my previous videos on the subject. Uh, just do a search for Atmo motor on YouTube. A lot of information will come up. So I'm building this larger motor for the guys down at Ion Power Group. They've been doing a lot of testing with my first Atmo motor and they've pretty much worn it out completely. The thing's caught in fire. They've just, okay. you know, they've attached large fan blades to it. It's been some amazing, uh, progress and really fun to follow. But I'm building a much larger Atmo motor and we'll do some testing with it uh, with those guys and see if the torque increases with size. As you can see in this clip, the first Atma motor actually had some pretty good torque even when connected to this large fan blade. So it'll be exciting to see what this larger, stronger unit will be capable of doing. Ion Power Group sent me this next video last year and it shows the Atma motor being powered directly off their atmospheric collectors. It's pretty cool. July 31st, 2015, Cheyenne, I've got your Atma motor hooked up here to my ion collectors outside, right through there. And to ground, no electronics, although I do have a spark gap, an adjustable spark gap hooked up. As you can see, you've got uh, a little bit of a spark coming through here, probably about 2,000 volts or so. And then from there, it goes over to your Atmo motor. So as you can imagine, I'm really excited about finishing up this larger Atma motor and taking it down to Ion Power Group's atmospheric electricity power station and testing it out. So all of this work on the Atma motor and thinking about atmospheric electricity has really inspired me with some crazy and far out ideas. So with my background in 3D graphics design and game development, I've decided to take some of these ideas and illustrate them in a flight simulator game. I'm calling this Saber Flight, and it's, you're basically a test pilot for Saber Flight Industries. And instead of levels, there's hangars. Inside each hangar, there's a new and unique aircraft or invention that you get to test. It's you, if you survive the test uh, and live to fly another day, you can open the next hangar and proceed. Anyway, I'm not sure when I'll finish this up. It's just something I'm going to work on in the, on the side for fun. But this is the very first sneak peek preview of Saber Flight Industries. Enjoy. Okay, so this is a super early preview, just really a proof of concept level for the game Saber Flight. And uh, you can see I've got my wheels stuck in this groove here. Let me explain what's going on. This plane is an atmospheric electricity powered plane. So you can see up here I've got an ion collector. This is collecting atmospheric electricity. The cable coming off the end of my uh, plane here goes down and makes contact with the water. So if I fly too high, that will break uh, contact with the water and I'll lose all connection uh, to the ground and my motor will slow down and I'll start gliding down almost immediately. So the trick is to fly under these thunderclouds and uh, circle up under them, almost like you're thermaling, but you know, you're just getting closer to the higher potential atmospheric electricity. So you can see I'm circling up right now under this cloud. My climb rate is okay, it's decent. Once you get up high enough, the goal is to strike out to the next cloud and to cross this channel. So uh, it's a pretty tricky... Oh, <laughs> I hate it when that happens. So I flew too high up into the base of the cloud and my plane blew up. Obviously, I've got to deal with this guy, either incinerate him or make him disappear. But anyway, we will try again. Be right back. Okay, so as you can see from that last experience, uh, being a test pilot is dangerous work and that's kind of the story of on this game in this game you're a test pilot uh, working for saber flight industries and you're going to have the opportunity to test a lot of strange bizarre and unusual inventions and in aircraft but uh, they're all quite dangerous and very crazy ideas so 
kind of a fun storyline there. Uh, you're this test pilot guy. If you uh, get struck by lightning, crash, do yourself in, you end up in the cemetery around uh, previous test pilots that also uh, flew a little too high to the thundercloud. But if you uh, complete the mission, you move on to the next hangar, and inside each hangar there'll be a very unique and interesting aircraft. So this is just really a very rough draft test prototype uh, demo that I'm playing with uh, of a single level. I really haven't even begun to flesh this game out yet, but uh, just, you know, testing the dynamics, trying to get the flight simulator physics working correctly has been a real challenge. It's, it's behaving very nicely now. It uh, adjusts for prop torque. We've got actual uh, airfoil simulation going on in the curvature of the wings, so a lot of good stuff there. And this time I'm trying to play more carefully. I really want to uh, get farther ahead and uh, get up to the uh, island that's out in front of us here. We'll see how it goes. Uh, the trick is to get enough height here to make it up to the next cloud. So we're, we're working on that, and I think we're good. Now, of course, if we fly too high, as you saw last time, we uh, get struck by lightning. So each level will have a lot of challenge, a lot of fun. Again, I have no idea when I'll complete this, you know, exactly what's going to happen. I'm just having uh, fun playing with this. Uh, my whole background and history has been in 3D graphics and also in game design, so something I really enjoy doing and I'm having a lot of fun with some concepts with this one folks so it's really kind of fun to core up under one of these clouds almost just like thermaline essentially but to have that danger level of getting struck by lightning uh, fun fun stuff now you can see the uh, landmass up ahead that we're headed toward I have no idea if I'm actually gonna make it it looks like a big stretch between uh, this point and the next cloud so I'm gonna circle up here Get a little higher before we strike out. Heh, <laughs> strike. That's what's going to happen, a lightning strike. But, uh, we'll see here. Alright, if I fly too high, I break connection with the water. Besides uh, increasing chance of getting struck by lightning, I very likely will lose uh, connection with my cable down here to the water, and I'll lose a lot of elevation if, if that happens. So. Anyway, we're making it across. At this point, I don't actually have the landing strip in place. Uh, like I said, this is just a super early sneak peek preview. Uh, but you can see the land up ahead. I've got to add a lot of stuff to this if I'm going to flesh this out into a playable game. But uh, in the meantime, you know, I've had a lot of dreams and ideas about the atmospheric electricity motor. And while I would never uh, imagine really uh, doing anything like this in real life with an Atma motor, it's really fun to dream. You know, I'm primarily an artist, and I just love creating things and using my imagination to imagine what might be possible. So anyway, we, we're coming up on the land. I'll give you a little view of the plane here. You can see the Atma motor up in the front of the plane, the uh, pilot, and uh, we've got the cable coming down here to the motor. So all fun stuff. And it uh, looks like we actually made it this time, so pretty cool. We'll drift down here and see if we can find a spot to land. Put this bird down gently if possible. Uh, going over the land, I really need to set this up so that we quit collecting atmospheric electricity. And uh, so that that operation only goes on over the water when the cable's in the water. But anyway, a lot to do on it still. You can see I'm losing a lot of my uh, thrust. See if I can flare it up and set it down over here. It's not looking good. <laughs> oh, great. Not a pretty landing, folks, but, uh, oh, no, 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 no. Don't go in the, okay. I'm dead. <laughs> Guaranteed drowning if the lightning doesn't get you. And what is going on with that cable? All right, I've got to work on some physics on the cable. <laughs> it's going nuts. Okay, I'm just going to let this go a little bit and see what happens. Uh, if you could harness the activity in that cable, you could generate excess over unity energy right there, folks. <laughs> I'm telling you. It's the reason you don't want to believe computer simulations. But, uh, okay, that's, that's really funny. The cable has gone nuts. All right, and crashed the program. So there you have it. Early sneak peek uh, preview of Saber Flight, little game I'm working on. Uh, let's all keep experimenting. Talk later.